These are just some of the examples of um, the graphing questions I've created in Moodle. So here, you know, graph a line. The direction says one of the points has to be a y-intercept. Um, so when you do this equation, you get one of the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is negative four. So you can just drag one of the points down to negative four, and the slope is negative uh, three over two. So either down three and right two, or up three and back two. And the logic behind the question. It's looking for one of the points actually being a y-intercept, and it's trying to line up um, the equation of this line with one that's in the background. So when I hit check, if one of those conditions does not meet, the whole question does not become correct. Um, unlike my other Moodle things, which are really good about showing it green and whatnot as correct, this one you have to kind of come down here and see that it, there's a redo question, and it says your graph is correct for full credit. So we got one point out of one point. Example of using um, a GeoGebra file to graph in Moodle and it actually automatically correcting. This one is a logarithmic exponential function. Um, I designed this one so it shows a log first even though the graph is supposed to be exponential. Um, the easiest way I could create this, though, was to um, have the uh, axes be the main point of the graph. So when we move this x around, the imaginary axes move with the graph. So we have switches up here. One of them is to change the function from logarithmic to exponential. The other two are to flip over the vertical uh, imaginary y-axis and flip over the horizontal. Um, depending on the negatives that are either in front of the 2 or in front of the power. So in this case we have to go 1 right, down 3, so I want to move the x 1 right, down 3. I've already set it up as an exponential function. And this negative in front flips it over the vertical, so that was this one. And again, this has logical um, checkpoints. Number 1 would be, did you choose the right function? It gives you a certain amount of points for that. Did you flip it correctly over the vertical? Did you flip it correctly over the horizontal? Um, and did you position this x in the right location? Um, so it goes through all that as a check process. And I've set it up so that it shows you know, the base graph is right. Oops. Um, the flipping is right or not um, along the x-axis, the y-axis. The horizontal vertical location is correct. And if all of those are correct, I gave a fifth condition of the whole thing is correct. Um, and it does it automatically, which is really nice. So they get a better sense of how the graph is moved um, around. This example is a um, sine graph. It's actually one of my favorite ones I've created. It took me forever um, to get around some of the complexities of this. Um, for instance, making sure that the equation up here landed on whole numbers. Um, this is the same one for the um, x-axis broken up into pies. Once I got that down, um, I had sliders and everything up here in the top corner, and one of my students said, well, why don't you just have us, you know, create two points for us to drag around to graph it? Um, so then I went about designing this one, and it works rather nicely. So here we have um, a sine function. This is the basic one, and it's negative one-half, so we know the amplitude is going to bring this thing uh, to negative one-half. So you just have to drag one of the points to the correct location. Um, the second thing is this has a phase shift of negative four. So I'll take care of the phase shift first um, and then design the period around that. And basically behind this is if you set up the um, graphing parameters for this, you would graph the first point as your phase shift, the second one one quarter of your period, and so forth and so on. So I'm going to first move this, um, the phase shift is negative 4, so I'll move that to negative 4. The period is 24, so that means every um, fourth of it is 6. So from here I just need to move the second point 6 units away. So this is the graph of um, f of x, and when I hit check it should tell me, again, it has its little conditions going on, 
do these two first points match up with the first two points of the real graph, negative one half sine of pi over 12x and so forth. So when I hit check, it'll go through and find, um, it'll tell you if the amplitude is correct. So in other words, did you make the B part of it correct? Um, I'm sorry, the A part of it correct. Oops, a little lock down there. Um, it'll tell you if the period is correct, so do you have the right length between the beginning of the curve and the end of the curve? It'll tell you if the phase shift is correct. Did you plot this point in the correct location? And if those three things are correct, then the graph is um, absolutely correct and you get full credit. Um, another thing I like about this graph, except for that with my Mac mouse, is you can scale it in and out. You can move it left and right. Um, if the words get in the way, you can move those around also to get them out of your way. So I've set this all up so it's pretty much user-friendly. Um, I think I've restricted the period to be about 3, so the highest it's going to go and lowest of is you know, positive 3, negative 3. And I tried to restrict the um, period to fit in the window, but if it doesn't, they can just move it um, to the side to get the period correct or the phase shift correct. Oh, another one of my favorite graphs is in uh, 171 where you're doing transformation of functions. And they always get confused about, you know, base graph and orientation and whether it gets to the inside of the, um, closer to the vertical or closer to the horizontal, depending on how you say squeeze, squish, flatten, whatever. Um, the cool thing about this is it randomly generates a function up here and to fit the function, you can switch the base graph from you know x squared, x cubed, cube root, square root, and absolute value. So they get a feel for what the shape of each one of these graphs is. So this one here is x cubed. Um, this one here will flip the graph, so if it's a negative x cubed or a positive x cubed. And I want them to play with these sliders to get a feel for what they do. Um, this one will move it left and right. This one will move it up and down. Um, I really wanted to put a point there, and I'll probably redesign it so you can just move a point around and get rid of these two sliders. Now the last part, let me get it in the right location. Uh, one to the right, and three up. The last part is um, deciding what side of the dotted line. So this one is a perfect x cubed. It doesn't have the 0.5 or the 1 half in front. So when I turn on the solid line one, this is the final graph of f of x, I have to decide if I want it to be on this side of the dotted line closer to the horizontal or on this side of the dotted line closer to the vertical. Since this is less than 1, bigger than 0, absolutely, it has to be on the side that it is. But if it was on the wrong side, you can switch it. Now these aren't perfect graphs. I mean, the number in front is going to change, but you only get the two choices, inside or outside. And then when you go down to the, ooh, again, this is a Mac problem. When you get down here to check, it'll tell you if you did each one of the pieces correct. Still loading. All right, so you chose the right graph, you flipped it right, you flipped it right. Oh, I'm sorry, you flipped it right, you horizontal and vertical shifted, corrected, you position on the right side of the dotted line. So did you put it on the closer to the horizontal, closer to the vertical, and if your graph is correct. So it checks all of these as logical arguments. Um, and if something's missing, um, yeah you can um, just do it again. I think I gave like two. So here we have a cube root graph, which is this one, and it's negative, so we're going to flip it. And we're supposed to go four to the uh, left. But I'm going to go four to the right, and we're going to go up three. Because, you know, common mistake. Turn on solid line, and let's put it on the wrong side. This one would be um, closer to the vertical, so that's the correct way of doing it. That one would be closer to the horizontal. But I'm going to get it wrong. So I'm going to hit check, and some of the logic, logical arguments aren't going to kick in. So here we have, chose the right graph, the flip is correct, and your vertical shift is correct. So that leaves off the horizontal and getting the solid line on the right side. 
Now it doesn't say the incorrect parts. I could put it in there. Um, it just creates a lot more um, conditions to make. And most of the students understand if you try one more time, you have mistakes in your graph. So that's um, graphing questions in Moodle. Personally, I think some of them are a lot better than my math lab. Um, here's my last example of uh, the questions. This one I came up with the other day. I thought it would be you know, kind of easy to do, and it turned out to be quite a headache. Um, but I finally got it done, and it's graphing inequalities, linear inequalities. Um, I'm working on a parabola line one right now. So here we have to you know, use A, B, and C, D to plot the two lines that are given, um, and uh, turning on the shading and whatnot. I've got to add some to the directions up there. So here's my system of inequalities, and the first line has to be A, B, and that's one of the things I have to add to the directions. So I'm going to move it to uh, negative 3. One of the points has to be on the y-axis as the y-intercept. Um, and I'm going to move c to uh, negative 1. All right. So the slope of the first... Ooh, I have to click it. The slope of the first one is negative 1 fifth. So, you know, take b down 1 and over 5. So that would be the line for negative 1 fifth x minus 3. Now I didn't include um, dotted or solid here, so I was just going for the equals part. Um, I probably could include it later. Um, I'd have to add on a few more of these little check boxes to turn on um, dotted or leave it solid. Um, all right, so the next one is 3 fifths x minus 1. Um, so that's this line. So up 3 and over 5. And I set it up in such a way that one of the slopes is always positive and the other one is negative. Um, the first go around, I had two parallel lines, and my last direction is put E in the solution region. Well, if the shading is away from the two parallel lines, then there is no solution. Um, so it never gave full credit. So I created it so that there's always a nice little intersection, and they're generally in a nice picture. They don't go off the page. All right, so. Um, I might change this part too because right now if they're to the right it means greater than and if they're to the left it means less than. So I might want to change it to be a little bit more random about how these sliders work. So here if we turn on the shading um, that would be greater than uh, the blue line, the top one here. So I want to change it to be less than. And the same thing for <coughs> the CD line. This one I want to be greater than, and that's perfectly fine where it is. Now E, I, I created this point because I know a lot of students that could shade and you know generally get the right answer, but they didn't know where the solution set was. So I set up E to be, you know, put it in the region where the solution set is. And E can end up anywhere in here and it'll mark it correct. So if we hit check. I have a few requirements on this one. First, they have to be on the y-axis. Um, the lines have to be correct. The shading has to be correct. And um, the E point is in the area, and all other parts are correct. So it kind of gives you a hint. Um, I also set up on this one, if you make a mistake, let me start it again, and then just hit uh, check. I think this is the one I set up on. that at least one part is incorrect. So I have included um, letting them know that something's wrong with the problem. Um, and I might have to backtrack and change a lot of mine to have that one little piece in there. All right, so that's the linear inequality question.